Hello guys, this is Smidern here. 3.1 patch notes. I'm super hyped. I can't wait to play 3.1. Um, expansion looks amazing, in my opinion. So much new cool stuff. This is me going through the patch notes. Well, I'm gonna be skipping a lot of the first ones because I read through them uh, at 2 a.m. right before I went to bed. And then I stopped halfway through um, and then went to bed. I recorded it, but sadly, I forgot to record the audio. <laughs> so that was really bad. So we'll just skip that. I just highlight the high points and then get to wherever I was. So the high points from the beginning, the, the big things for me, they're right here. And they are this. So rip old mirror rare items because the um, new elder and shaper items can from some of the old uh, affixes have some higher. They haven't told us which ones though, but perhaps we can have some new mirror items, some that are better than the old best of the best items because there will be a higher tier maybe. And then another point. This is huge. This is the biggest one yet. I don't know. It's just a quality of life improvement. I think it's a lot better than the stairs in Act 1. Because, I mean, it says after you're done with that act, then you don't use it anymore. You know, the stairs thing in Act 1. It was a really nice quality of life improvement. But you do maps for a long time. And having to go to an act to get to Navali instead of having her in your hideout. And now being able to have her in, a, in your hideout. It's going to be so nice. Really looking forward to having that. I mean, I don't understand why I never had it in the first place, but it's gonna be nice. And 48 your new unique items. Awesome stuff. Gonna be nice to look through all of those. It's gonna be really great. Maybe I'll... Maybe, I don't know if they show them here. Probably not. Maybe I'll make a video of them. You know, going through them all. Maybe. I don't know. 32 new new maps and 2 unique ones. Awesome shit. Awesome. And a really nice, again, quality of life thing. Uh, also, so you don't have to, you know, calculate all that shit. The cooldown on the skills will now be shown what they are after the modifiers instead of only showing the modifiers. So that's great. So let's get down to where I think I was at AM and then read through the rest of them. So, Dark Pack, I already read that. So I nerfed to the damage when you self-cast. And also to the radius, it's it's gone, as far as I remember. Detonate dead. Huge buff to detonate dead. Let's just read it. It now deals spell damage based on the level of the skill gem, in addition to damage based on the corpse's maximum life. The base fire damage dealt by the spell part of the explosion has been, has been significantly increased. The skill now gains additional area of effect radius, which is huge as it levels, and its base crit chance has been increased from 5 to 6%. The cast time has been lowered to 0.6 seconds from 0.8. So the cast time is 25% to 33% if you think more or less. So huge improvement in the cast time and cast speed. And some more crit chance, a lot of more AoE. And the skill also looks great, you know, from the visual effects, the new visual effects they gave it. I think a lot of people will be playing Dead Net Dead this league. And I myself have, think, have thought uh, when I saw it that it looks really fun to play. And I was always thought about making a character, a Dead Net Dead character. I've never gotten around to it. But since I think so many people will be playing it because of these new updates... I think I'm going to be playing something else because it's it's not fun playing what everyone else is playing. I don't I don't think so. Sometimes if it's if it's something I really want to play, but a lot of the times I like to play something else. Just uh, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, next one. Huge uh, buff to race specters or something. Race specter now grants additional accuracy to specters based on the level of the gem. So it's kind of a yeah, definitely a um, a buff. 
And Bear Trap and Vol Reign of Errors now remove all movement speed as opposed to reducing it by 300%. I didn't even know that it didn't do that. I thought it, you know, locked you in place. But I guess if you then had over 300% movement speed, you could still move, but really slowly. It's my guess. Anyways, uh, Raging Spirits now have 15% less added damage multiplier up from 30%. That sentence does not make much sense for me. 15% less added damage multiplier up from 30%? Oh, so it's 15% less now and it was 30% less. Okay. I understand now. Anyways, similar to Skeletons, huge uh, buff, I remember. 50% more added damage multiply up from 30% less. That is a huge buff to Skeletons, but... I'll never be playing them. I don't like summoner playstyle. It's never really been my thing. Um, and they've already always been bad, you know, slow movement speed. Um, but I don't know. Maybe they would be good now for summoners. If you want some slow ass minions. <laughs> Raging spirits. Spiders created from Arakalis Fang and the spirit skulls from the essence of insanity can no longer taunt their enemies. Okay. Not gonna affect me. The amount of burning damage dealt by the burning ground created by burning arrow. That's some sentence. On a character with the pitch darkness threshold duel is now determined by the level of the burning arrow skill gem. Not gonna affect me either. But okay. Orb of storms can now trigger lightning strikes from a channel from channel skills. So from uh, you know the new rework of uh, lightning tendrils uh, and desecrate. It creates five corpses up from three, and the cooldown has been reduced to three seconds per stack down from five. The cast time has been reduced to 0.8 seconds down from one. Desecrate's maximum core level now grows more steadily as the skill gem levels up. It can now create higher level corpses at most levels except at level except level 19 of the gem, in which the maximum corpse level has been lowered from 100 to 81. So I think overall a big buff. Definitely. And then Lightning Tunnel has always been reworked and gotten a buff and visual overhaul. Minion life support. This is huge, I remember. Uh, it now affects minion life multiplic... I can't say that way. Multiplicatively. I, I can't say it, probably. Sorry. It now provides 30% more minion life rather than 30% increased minion life at level 1. Up to 49% more life at level 20. That's insane. I mean, golems, they have base health at max level over 20k life. And uh, I don't know, zombies, they also have a lot of life. You can even have that unique item that makes you have fewer zombies but with more life. So just golems with this is like 30k life just with this. And then if you take all the life from from uh, from the skill tree and perhaps items, and I mean 40, 50k health golems, and then you get some percent regen on, on them, unkillable fucking golems, holy shit. Get some regen auras, and perhaps, I don't know if there is a unique skill that has life regen, percent life regen, and then you can use that uh, passive Note that gives so they give the properties of the shield. If there is, then holy shit! Yo, yeah, there actually is. I remember that's a low level one, which has a lot if they're on low health. So when they then get a whole low health, then they get a, they'll never die. Actually, because they have like six percent. I, I don't know. I can't remember a lot of percentages of health regen out of such a big number. It's gonna be fucking insane, dude. Unkillable golems for sure. And Dark Pack now counts as being a minion skill gem and do, will thus interact with with effects such as the one found on Cloak of Tom's Alley. Sorry the noises. I just had this wheezing sound and I tried to get away. Um, ruthless support can no longer support channel skills, uh, so that's so Cyclone. Iron Will can no can now support some skeletons and will affect the damage dealt by skeleton mages if you are using the dead reckoning threshold duel. 
Okay. Arctic Armor's chilling effect now slows enemies by 30% when you are hit up from 10%. Well, that's a big buff. Melee attack supported by multi strike now more accurately take attack range, including area effect modifiers, into account when checking for targets for s subsequent attacks. This has neg negatively impacted some skills and positively positively impacted others. But in general, melee skills supported by multi strike will target monsters that better fit the behavior of the attack. Okay, and we'll have to see if that's going to be good or bad. Good for some, bad for some, they say. Oh. Bladefall's area of effect has wider than intended close to the... Was, was wider than intended close to the caster. The area of effect now better matches the area the blades visually land. The total width of Bladefall's area of effect has been increased slightly to compensate for the now narrower early stages. Okay. Stormburst is now correctly modified by factors by factors based on the state of the projectile, such as powerful persistence projectile, have 100% increased critical strike chance against targets they pierce. Okay. Charge death is now limited to a maximum of 15 strikes per skill use, as well as limited by distance traveled. Oh, well, so that's a nerf. I don't think any people was using that skill though. It looked fun, I never tried it actually. Static strikes radius has been increased from 19 to 20. <laughs> a little bit. AoE boost. But such a shit, sk shit skill to use, I don't find it fun to use at all. Bring its total radius to 24, gem level 20. Static strike explosion that correctly applies ailments with 40% 40, 40 less effect. It was previously applying ailments without taking the less damage modifier into account. Oh, well, didn't know that. So, nerfed. <laughs> Ice Crest radius has been increased from 8 to 9 for the first stage, from 16 to 8 18 for the second stage, and from 4 24 to 26 for the third stage. So, buff to Ice Crash. Earthquake's radius has been increased from 28 to tw 25 to 28 for the second stage. Oh, that's nice. Reef's radius has been increased from 17 to 20, bringing it up to 24. Wow, that's nice. I actually thought about playing Reef last league. Hmm. But I have already planned for playing, which which is going to be really, really bad. I know it, but I really want to try play our character buffing. Uh, the shock effect. It has built in build a shock effect. Uh, Increases the effect of it and then you know get it on the skill tree um, trying to buff it, but They reintroduced bigger packs it would have been better last week probably because the pack sizes wasn't that big and arc hits a determined amount of people or enemies and um, If there are huge packs, it's a really inefficient skill to use um, but I Still think I, I might I already you know had have uh, planned out the um, the skill skill tree and everything, um, but of course I'm gonna have to recheck it after they probably change the law. Um, Reeves radius wither now increases chaos damage taken by six percent down from seven percent and stacks up to fifteen times. So wither nerf, I think that that's that's fine because it seemed like it was pretty pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Well, Vol Power Siphon's radius has been reduced to 70 units. Wow, that's huge nerf from 70, from 120 to 70. Mm, but I think it was probably also the fastest clearing skill in the game. Maybe one of them at least. Divination cards. The locations, drop rates and requirements for many divination cards have been reworked in part due to uh, to change this to the atlas in this patch and in part to better integrate divination cards into areas introduced in the fall of Oriath. Okay. Life regeneration mods have been slightly renamed and recorded as two tier higher tiers <clears throat> and reordered as two higher tiers have been added. Wow, two higher tiers. Life regen, the new, uh, new way. 
Rip Wall Pact. <laughs> or, you know, that new, or not new, but that um, 800% of mana used gained us life mana potion. Um, for, for a new crazy region, for people who want to kill the bosses and be a boss killer character. So either one of these... Oh my god, what happened to my voice? Oh my god. Doing the puberty all over. I think it's just me when I'm tired and my voice can crack sometimes. Sorry. <laughs> That's horrible. Oh my god. Hide myself. I'm not here. Don't see me. Okay, let, let's keep going. Um, existing items can be updated to these new values using divine orbs. Okay. Oh, this is, oh, I'm, this is pure life regen and not, oh, I thought it was percent life regen. Never mind. When used on a belt, Essence of Insanity now grants 10% movement speed. Whoa. Up from 5%. Wow, 10% movement speed. That's really nice. Atlas only item base types can no longer be found in vault side areas. Okay. Didn't know they could at all to begin with. Uh, at serious acuity, no longer instantly leeches from critical strikes. Yeah, like Vault Pact. And now instead grants Vault Pact if you have dealt a critical strike recently. This does not affect existing... Wow, it does not affect existing versions of the item. So the only way you can have Vault Pact now is with, with old... At serious acuity, man, the prices will be insane. They were already really high, I think. Uh, maybe uh, they reduced it, but they used to be very high. And now the old ones gonna have insane prices. Just like, boom. It's gonna be probably like um, at the level, if not more, than the um, the old Kaom's heart with 1,000 life. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Witchfire Brew, and sadly I don't have any of them. <laughs> that sucks. Witchfire Brew now creates a despair curse. That makes sense. Um, this affects all versions of the item. Yeah, Doomflitz now adds. Oh, it's just a Doomflitz nerf. Already saw this nerf, and that seems fine. Because Doomflitz were like one of the biggest, best boss killer builds with barrage and pretty insane stuff. Um, so, nerf to Doomflesh. Kongmin's Strategy Gem no longer creates a smoke cloud when a Sogolet trap is triggered. Instead, grants the Fog of War skill, which creates a smoke cloud when any of your traps are triggered. This skill has a cooldown. Okay. Lance Roar now only grants knockback to melee attacks during Flask effect. Okay. Lycosidae, I don't know how to say that. Chance to drop from monsters have been greatly reduced. This item was being used on a significant portion of melee characters across all levels as an extremely cheap way to get around accuracy requirements. Okay, Bisco's color, chance to drop from monsters have been greatly reduced. And Queen of the Forest now has 200 to 240% increased evasion, down from 240 to 380. Huge nerf. This change can be divined, yeah. Why the hell would you do that? The moon speed bonus this item can provide has been capped at 100% for all versions. Changes to evasion based types in the fall of Aurea both uh, pushed the evasion rating in this item too high and took the moon speed this item granted to extremes. Okay. So rip the Gouda builds with extreme uh, movement speed. And Big nerf to the Rise of the Phoenix. Maximum fire resist granted has been reduced to 5% from 8%. Life regeneration has been increased from 15 to 20. Oh, has been increased to 15 to 20. Yeah, it doesn't matter that much. To the fucking nerf from 6. These changes can be divine. New versions now also grant 40 to 60 life. This cannot be divined. Omen on the winds. Now allows Ice Shot to pierce three additional targets down from five. This can be divine. I don't know what Overlove to Winds is. 
The dancing dervish, while manifest a dancing dervish is active, the dancing dervish now has a 25% chance to grant you a rampage kill when it hits a unique enemy. The minions created by this unique can no longer cross unwalkable gaps. These changes affect all versions of the item. Okay. The pandemonious chilling effect now slows enemy by 30% when you are hit up from 10%. These changes affect all versions of the item. Haven't this one already been shown? I think. Hmm. I think they did this twice. But above. The Baron now adds half of your strength to your minions rather than all of your strength. This affects all versions of the item. So nerf. Dead Reckoning now correctly will replace the number of skeleton warriors with skeleton mages when using walls summon skeletons. Okay. Death O now probably updates its behavior when items, passives, or skills change it in some way. Oxium clarified that freeze duration not effect is based on area shield. The functionality has not changed. Okay. Monster balance. New monsters have been added to areas all throughout Ray Class and Oriath, including newer, more difficult versions of the parasites found throughout Acts 6 and 7. And Kitawa Find versions of the black arts found throughout Act 5. The number of monsters found in areas throughout the campaign has been adjusted, and the number of monsters found throughout the game should be more consistent across multiple instances. This particularly affects the old fields, the wall ruins, the sewers, the marketplace, the battlefront, the ebony barracks, and the crystal veins, but it's not strictly limited to those areas. Okay. Uh, the following unique monsters are no longer immune to freeze and instead have a minimum action speed that they'll be set up if they're frozen. The Shaper Guardian and the Chimera, Guardian of the Minotaur, Guardian of the Hydra, Guardian of the Phoenix, Vision of Justice, so all the big bosses, the Goddess, Argus, Ab Abaxoth, the End of All That Is, ha Hast, Host, Hast, Unrelenting Frost, Atsiri, Queen of the Vol, Vessel of the Vol, Atsiri is devoted. I don't want to. I don't even want to try to say that. You you can read this for yourself. <laughs> That's impossible to say. Tormented Tempters. Hmm. Minimum action speed that you will set up. So not permanent freeze, but maybe if you have high enough. Cast speed and freeze duration and damage with your cold spells. Hmm. I remember my old Ice Spear character who could perma freeze almost all bosses in the game. A lot of crit multiplier. Insane crit amount of critical multiplier. It was a cool character. <laughs> Monsters which triggers. Which triggers skills based on the damage they can. What? Monsters which trigger skills based on the damage they can. Monsters they, they take can now trigger those skills from taking damage over time. Okay. Infested monsters that can spawn parasites. Oh. So, the, like the guys that has. Um, that blows up if you hit them. Um, that. Boss from Act. Is it Act 3? I can't remember his name. Uh, infested monsters that can spawn parasites when slain now grant increased experience and dropped when Shatter exploded to compensate for them not re releasing their parasites on death. Okay. Shield crafts now give additional experience if destroyed before they can unleash their final form. Crimson Scholars also give additional experience if shattered. Um, monsters, mods, reflex. That's really nice for people who shatter stuff. So they get the XP for both parts. That's really nice. Oh my god, my nose. There's like this tiny fairy dude, girl, man thing. Sits with a, with a feather and just... Oh, I hate allergies. Allergies are the fucking... It's so shitty, so that's because me uh, doing all this shit. I've been cleaning a bit today, so dust in the air. Yeah, I can I can definitely feel that shit. Um, monster mods reflect 
physical damage and reflex elements have been reworked. Yeah, we, we heard about this. They will now appear as nemesis mods. Okay. Attacking a monster with a physical or mental effect now triggers a mortar spell targeted at your location. The spell has a cooldown. Wow. This is such a nice thing. Rip reflect. That's nice. Both versions of effect both versions of effect now only appear on Nemesis rare monsters. Sweet. The effects created by Flamebearer, Frostbearer, and Stormbearer Bloodlines monsters now appear more quickly and should be more clearly visible. Yeah, they show like um, they have like these lines that go up, so it's a lot easier to notice them. So then you don't notice them too late and get blown up. The Rislada find in Act 6 has been significantly changed. I don't know whose Rislada is. Can't remember. But uh, eggs now explode and create damaging patches on the ground, and Rislada herself is much more mobile. The monsters spawned by her pods are possessed by more difficult parasites. Rislada herself is now immune to knockback. Okay. The Lightning Thorn skill used by the Black Guard mages as well as others no longer deals a flat amount of reflected lightning damage to attackers. Instead, it triggers a nova of lightning projectiles with a short cooldown. That's great. The parasite infesting Hollow Skull, the Willing Host, is now called something. And I'm not gonna try and say that. They can now leave Slam. <laughs> Parasites that drop off of slain monsters will now match their host rarity. Riptide now better signals when it's used in Riptide now better signals when it will use its dangerous skills and creates fewer vortexes. Okay. I don't know what who Riptide or that monster anyway. Captain Archery and Captain or Lianus, anus, <laughs> anus. I can't unsee that. Anus. Ah, uh, ah, oh, so funny. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Can I drop items? Just not very many. Okay. Carrion burrows are now visually distinct from their surface-dwelling counterparts. The life and damage of many warbands monsters have been adjusted to make them suitable map bosses. The beams in the ever av various re reassemble encounter now have more pattern variations. They also deal less damage. But the damage persists for a duration after you have been touched. Man, my eyes, they just flimmer. This is why school work is not for me. After reading for a while, it just starts to melt together and very unclear. And I have glasses. But they don't help at all with this issue. The beams in the Kato Defiler of Light encounter have had the same treatment. Malagar's slam attack in Acts 7 and 9 now always poisons and maims on hit. Sulfuric striders and undying operators can no longer appear in essence monoliths. The bloodstained skeletons found on the blood aqueducts have been made slightly more difficult. Okay. Effigy of Fierce Crows now deal more damage, improved Tolman encounter in Act 8, Tolman and Ankh can now use few extra skills, Karina missions which require you to find, raise and kill an undead monster now use different on death effects, oh instead of only that constant blow up thing. Reduce the amount of damage dealt by the Pillars of Carnage rune explosion. Okay, Chevron Spall Lightning in Act 6 and 9 now deals more damage and has a clearer area of effect. The skill also deals less damage at close range. Chevron's Stormburst, Stormburst in Act 9 now fires an additional projectile. It can no longer stun and it deals less damage to players at close range. Chevron's summoned books now have more life and deal approximately 35% more damage. Okay. So she's gonna be a lot harder. Um, Anna. I don't know her name. Death's Worship now deals. Physical damage with her projectile Nova. Her raging spirits now deal more damage at lower levels. Grooved bandits, al bandits, bandit allies now flee when he dies. Dredger's spirit is now a little quicker at raising zombies in Act Nine. 
to Adrian, Act 9 no longer repeatedly summons a large number of stone pillars. The pillars now die when the encounter ends. Okay. Significantly, portions of the depraved Trinity encounter have been reworked. In particular, Melgaros, Bladefall, and Chavron's ball lining have undergone large changes. The damage of Kital's X Blast, the skill shaped like an X, has been lowered slightly in Act 10. Yeah, that that thing hurt. The bear acolytes in Act 6 now move more quickly. Quickly. Brian Crack now has a sweet suit of crackling new skills. Clockwork golems will no long no longer simply flee. Instead they'll move around you and to your based on different conditions. Their damage has been increased by 25%. Man, all this um, talk about, you know, the Marsus. Oh, we're soon done. Soon done. Man, it's not the most interesting. There is a bit of few, but I can't remember all the fucking names of them. There's a few of them that I know that that can be good to know how they've changed, definitely. The augmented dead in chamber since X7 no longer have a chance to launch a lightning soul on death. Dawn can now throw his shield and it will explode into smaller projectiles. Dusk has a new projectile skill called Carver Bomb and doesn't make your floors more comfortable to walk on. Ha ha ha. <laughs> the window shard monsters in Act 10 now deal more damage and have more life and resist all elements instead of just coal. They spawn in fewer numbers and are larger. They now have altered behaviors, behavior to be less like Altered behavior to be less likely to all use their rolling attack immediately. Okay, that was that sentence was not very well, well written. Plague Rats, Wretch in the Chamber of Sins now has some friends he can hang out with. <laughs> okay. Sin and Innocence are now a little more dynamic during Act 10 final. The Basilisk now has a Stone Gaze ability in. If you face each other during this ability, you become petrified. Okay, so like stone. Petrification is similar to freeze, but is if, but is removed if you are hit a number of times or the duration runs out. So freeze removal will not remove it. Who is the basilisk? I don't know. Boss. Hmm. The blood so fallen and the blood aqueduct now explode on death, sending corrupted blood projectiles in all directions. Is that the, um, the big bird maybe? Boss? I don't know. Tukuhama's vanguards no longer summon multiple to totems at a time, all spectered, and the duration of their totems has been lowered to 5 seconds from 10. They are less likely to place additional totems while they have at least one totem. Okay. Wickerman Righteous Fire damage has been lowered while spectered. These monsters were using a version of Righteous Fire not intended for specters and were dealing significantly more damage than intended as a result. This change brings them in line with other specters who use Righteous Fire. Okay. Map balance. How much? Holy shit, dude. How far am I? Holy shit, there's still a lot left. Map balance. The entire atlas has been reworked. Many map names have changed. And there are balance. Um, okay, I'm not going to read everything from now on. This is going to take too long. Um, only like little keywords when key things pop up. Hmm. Okay. The rules... Narrow limits, confused tall monsters. Okay, so rip linear maps. Map mods have also been rebalanced. So every mod gives everything. Hmm. Oh, and but the magnitudes uh, are are different. Okay, Mokun Marcel. Okay, 
Okay. And a new map prefix feasting. Okay. New new guys for maps. Great. Um Okay. Well, this makes sense. Did make sense that it did. Sun colors. Actually. Okay. Hmm. Too close to walls. Okay. The boss of Dylan Tyson. Oh man, this map is just the worst death and taxes, but now it moves 35% faster. Getting him from one one to the other man took so long. Such a shitty map. Having him move 35% faster, that's huge. To make the map maybe actually fine. Such a shit map before this. Great change. Twisted FG monster. Okay. Roma. Ooh, Roa map bosses now re regain 33% of their maximum life when you, you, you break one of their nests. Don't do that then. Oh, nice. Free magic monster pack. With with few bosses that didn't have them. Passive tree changes. Oh, vault pack has been. This is the big one everyone knew about. No longer grants instantaneous life leads, and instead double the rate of your life leads as well as your maximum leads rate. It's been moved into the duelist area. The passive skills behind Mind Over Matter, it now grants 10% increased mana down from 12% and the non-notable 30% increased mana down from 40% and 40 added mana down from 100. Wow, it's a huge nerf to Mind Over Matter notes behind it. Mm, I don't want to pronounce that. 3% maximum life per second. Oh, so nerf to um, maximum life per second on the the note the, the notes. I actually made a um, Slayer build to compensate for the lack of vault packs, where I just went all maximum life per second more uh, on the skill tree, and um, and of course you know the Slayer as well. Passive skills which are pretty again granted increased middle physical damage. While holding a shield now grants increased physical attack damage while holding a shield. It's no longer restricted to melee. That's nice. That's really nice. So, wand users. It can work for them as well. <laughs> Many passive skills which really only... Oh my nose, one more. Ah. Uh, sorry guys. Oh my fucking god. I should have trimmed my beard. If there's any male people out there, do you know when when this has gotten a bit too long, and when you talk, like it it uh, it goes into your skin, and your skin gets irritated, and it, it's it's like that right now. I need to go right after this. Is this is annoying? So, I only started you know when I start talk talking because I move my lips. Hmm. Remove one of the passive leads to the Ash Frost. No, okay. Slayer Brutal Fervor no longer grants 10% of maximum life per second to maximum leads rate. Rip. The map bosses you are required to defeat. Okay. Shikara has been added to the Pantheon. New Dark Shrine effect can only be found. Okay. Doesn't state which. Though. 
Change the requirements for some chests to appear. In general, chests should feel more rewarding and better suited for that level and difficulty. Okay. Hmm. Nice. Increase the total amount of items found on average from silver chest. Ooh, silver chest buff. Nice. The helmet enchantment which grants additional projectile for pressure. Yeah, it's been nerfed. And roofed from, removed from the merciless labyrinth. And the eternal one now only gives one down from two. Sauna league mods available doing 3.1. Let's see. Anarchy. 2 chaos, bloodlines, 3 chaos, beyond 3 chaos, fortune of favor, Ooh, this is the exciting one, what does this do? Fortune favors the brave, cast 3 chaos orbs. Select a sauna mod at random from those available from the device, including any mods you have not yet unlocked. Wait, what? Including any mods you have not yet unlocked. What do I don't? I'm not quite sure. I understand this. So it doesn't like I haven't. Un, I'm only at level four, so it won't give all of these. I'm not sure what the hell. Select a sauna mod at random from those available. So if these are available, then pick one of these. So that's not worth it. Three, three, two. Or I mean, maybe it can then get one of these as well, just one random. I'm guessing that because otherwise it wouldn't make sense unless you have max level to use it. So I'm guessing it. you can still get these even though you're only level 4 maybe. Otherwise, don't do it until you're level 8, I guess. Ooh, Breach! And 6 Chaos. Oh, it's expensive one, but yeah. Level 8. Hmm... Including any mods you have not yet unlocked. I'm not quite sure I understand this. If anyone understands this, I'd love to know what the hell it means. Definitely gonna be looking at other streamers um, or other people who've made videos about this or Reddit to try and understand this. Maybe make a post there. So, Ambush, Domination, Essence, Breach. And some PvP balance. I don't care about that. Wow. Burp. World changes. Completing the Mercy Mission quest now rewards player with their chosen support gem as well as a flask. Okay. Hedge Maze has been removed and both Chiris Plum and the Trial of Sanity have been moved into the Imperial Gardens. Oh, that's nice. Always having to go there if you wanted to doing the trial and that quest if you wanted to do that. That's great. More streamlined. Story glyphs have been added. Plus, it was a maze, so hated that area. Shitty area. Hmm. Strange barrels are fucking OP, though, dude. Hmm. Hmm. What did the minimum minimap icons for doors and area transitions that we're missing them? Okay, nice. Hmm. Shrines should no longer appear directly outside Tukahama's fortress. Katao's arena in Act 10 is now called the Adler of Hunger. Malachi's journal no longer reference and incorrect data. Prophecies. Rare monsters is able to fulfill the requirements for unique item prophecies have been added to various locations throughout the world. They provide the opportunity to obtain an item with a high enough level to be six linked. Wait, what? I don't understand this. Rare monsters able to fulfill the requirements for unique item prophecies have been added to various locations throughout the world. They provide the opportunity to obtain an item with a high enough level to be six linked. So even if you know, even if you're low leveled, low level, 
Okay. You are no longer required to have the subject of a faded unique prophecy equipped. Oh, that's nice. And can now complete such prophecies by merely holding the unique item in your inventory. Wow, that's nice. Hated that you have to use like had to use a bow on a non bow character. Took forever and was shitty. Um that's nice. The prophecy to twins which turns a non twin map into a twin map no longer grants six percent increased quantity of items found. Little nerf. The prophecy monstrous treasure now completes upon opening the final strong box in the area. Wait. Oh, but it goes away uh, when you use it, right? So that's just, you know, completing that prophecy, if you can say that. Like, it should remove it, right? So you just can't keep using it. It's like one of the best prophecies there is in the game. So you, then you just, if it doesn't remove it, that, that wouldn't make sense. So I guess it just still removes it, but... You then get like the completion of the whatever it's called, like um, what the hell it is, achievement for completing it or whatever when you do the last one. Oh, bug fixes. Is there anything? Mm, it's a lot of bug fixes. Oh, character balance, the experience penalty. Yeah, we've already, I've already seen that. Much harder to get from 95 to 100. Hmm. Damn, nothing about buffing arc, which I was gonna use. Damn, a lot of bug fixes. Hmm. I don't think I wanna go through the bug fixes. Holy fuck, there's a lot of bug fixes this time around. Damn. Holy shit. So since I don't want to go through the bug fixes, this video is already pretty damn long, I think. If any of you have watched through all of this, that's awesome, man. <laughs> you are fucking awesome. And I'll definitely be streaming 3.1. I'm really, really hyped about this league and this expansion. Probably gonna do some arc. It's gonna be really shitty, especially now with bigger packs. Maybe if it's just gonna be too horrible, I'll remake and make another character. Maybe the Reef the guy, because that's what that was kind of the two that I was thinking about. But we'll see. Thanks a lot for watching, and I hope you are as excited as I am to play Path of Exile, my favorite game of all time, 3.1. Let's go. See you later, and have a great one. Bye.